What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. I can't already tell there's gonna be people in the comments section calling me a libtard and an SJW. To those people, I think you'll be happy to know that I've made tons of videos where I criticize the progressive mindset. So no, I'm not an SJW. I'm just a man who can draw his own conclusions on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm a somewhat big fan of Paradox games. If you don't know, they're some of the biggest names in the strategy genre. They've made games spanning from the medieval ages, renaissance, victorian era, world war II, and they even made a space one as well. I guess there were also games about Rome and the one with Napoleon, but we don't talk about those. Even though their DLC policy is, well, frankly ridiculous, Paradox are probably the only AAA developers I feel confident in purchasing from, in a day and age where most AAA developers are really just not worth your time or money. Paradox are the guys that really bother putting in the content, making you feel like you got your money's worth. Their games are infinitely replayable. There's a reason why people put literal thousands of hours into them. Today, we're taking a look at a ruckus being made about a game called Crusader Kings 3, a game set in the medieval ages, as you can tell. In the game, you manage a realm like an empire or a kingdom, duchy, stuff like that. And one of its defining features is its sort of politics system. Unlike other Paradox games, the politics in this game play out at an individual level. You've got to manage your relationships with people not only within your own realm, but with other kingdoms and empires as well. You have to manage marriages, alliances, that sort of stuff. So Paradox released this dev diary on their forums and one of the sections is as follows. Coming in with 1.5 is support for same sex marriage. Not only just in mods either, but as a new game rule alongside the same sex relations game rule so you can use it in unmodded games too. We've updated a variety of AI logic and interactions and content to take that into account when playing. Mods are of course able to implement this into their different worlds without having it to be a game rule. It can be based on different cultures or anything in the game world at all. This is something that we're very happy to put into the game and have support in the game rules for unmodded games too. It is something that a lot of the team and community wanted. We are glad that it is finally going to be shipped in 1.5. And I actually want to bring this up because this is actually a pretty important thing. It says it will have support in the game rules. Now if you don't know, the game rules in Crusader Kings 3 essentially let you customize the game experience. You can set the difficulty, when or even if the Mongols invade, the end date, a lot more. It allows you to basically customize the game experience. So homosexual marriage, according to this post, will be entirely customized within the game rules. You aren't forced into it, you won't be locked out of achievements or anything, it is completely optional. If you don't want to do it, you don't gotta. So a website called Bounding Into Comics picked up on this. Bounding Into Comics, I've seen them around. You know how websites like Kotaku act as an echo chamber for, uh, I suppose, social justice warriors? Bounding Into Comics, they strike me as the same sort of site. They're just on the other side of the spectrum. They're an echo chamber for anti-SJWs, basically. That's the kind of the feel I get for them. They wrote about the update, and for honesty's sake, I'll read some of the article. I don't have much to say about it. It pretty much just repeats what I've already told you. You can skip to this time if you want to skip to the commentary. Crusader Kings 3 to add same-sex marriage in future patch. Paradox Interactive has announced that their historical empire-building strategy game Crusader Kings 3 will use a future patch to add in the ability for rulers engage in homosexual relationships to marry. In a recent developer diary on the topic of modding, including discussion of how players could modify royal court scenes, add scripted widgets to their personal UIs and more, Paradox Interactive programmer Matthew Klohasi, don't know if I'm saying that right, informed players the game's upcoming 1.5 update will not only introduce support for same-sex marriage mods, but also add it as an option to the game proper. Coming with 1.5 of support for same-sex marriage, not only just in mods, but as a new game rule alongside the same-sex relations game rule so you can use it in unmodded games too, explained the programmer. We've updated a variety of AI logic and interactions and content to take into account when playing. So Hesse further noted, mods are of course able to implement this into their different game worlds without it having to be a game rule. It can be based on different cultures or anything in the game world at all. The Crusader King series typically puts players in the role of a ruler, such as a king, queen, or even emperor, and tasks them with ensuring that their dynasty thrives, expands, and continues through whichever means they wish to employ, along with such such options as diplomacy, religion, treachery, and war. Players can also draft, marry, and pass on their empire to an heir. While players couldn't engage in affairs, polygamy, the hiring of consorts and concubines, and even incest, even being allowed to create various schemes and machinations that ensure these scenarios could happen with as little consequence as possible, adoption is not possible in the vanilla version of Crusader Kings 3. This could mean that even in a game where the various factions and faith are set to be accepting of homosexuality, a gay king or queen could be treated as essentially infertile, unable to produce 
produce a legitimate error of their own. Previously, in a dev diary published during the game's development, Paradox Interactive stated that they wanted Crusader Kings 3 to give players as much freedom as possible to shape the game world in their image. To this end, the developer introduced options for players to customize the game rules in a number of historically inaccurate ways regarding gender and sexuality, such as those that allowed for female-dominated religions, women to have an almost equal role in ruling a kingdom alongside their husbands, and ancient cultures to have a more accepting view towards homosexuality. And I'll cut it off there, the rest of the article is basically filler. So I will say, objectively speaking, I, I don't think there's anything about the article to really criticize it for, I don't think it really does anything wrong, it gives you the facts and nothing but. Although I do think we all know why this was written, it's outrage bait. You're supposed to see the headline and be all like, I can't believe they're forcing diversity on a medieval game. You know, you click it and you give these guys all sorts of ad revenue. Because essentially that's their audience, they're Kotaku, just on the other side of the spectrum. Outrage bait basically fuels these guys. So the article isn't interesting at all. Again, it's outrage bait made for a quick buck, but that's gaming journalism for you. What interests me is the responses given. I'll read off some of the responses and give my overall take on them. Adding wokeness to a game will not make woke people happy. They will only continue to make more demands without actually buying. This means that anything that starts going woke will only continue further in that direction until it becomes outright ridiculous as the non-woke quit buying and the woke demand more change. The non-woke noticed this years ago, which is why they give up on anything that starts going woke. Eventually as the product becomes too woke for anyone non-woke but never woke enough for the woke, you can never be woke enough to satisfy the woke, the company continues to lose money. Is it necessary? How large is the homosexual gaming community for this game? I had never heard of the game either, so there's that. Wouldn't it be great if we could just make a game that appeals to the actual folks buying the game? You know that the woke mob doesn't really buy games, they just try to inflict the worldview on everyone else, killing geek culture an inch at a time. Right, because this makes sense in a historical game where every single religion represented by the various empires was vehemently opposed to gay marriage and usually to homosexuality in general. This is coming right off my Steam wish list. Way to rip out immersion. Is there an actual market demand for this game? I feel like this is just another cheap virtue signal. Ah uh, yes, the game set in a period that was noted for its tolerance and acceptance of anything that deviated from the norm. Okay, I buy. When in all the crusades was same-sex marriage a thing? That's not realistic and doesn't belong in a game that's based on history. So what I notice, a lot of these people don't seem to understand that this is going to be an optional thing. A lot of these people are complaining about immersion and historical accuracy. Here's the thing, if you don't want homosexual marriage, well just don't turn it on, right? You want have a historically accurate playthrough, all you have to do is click a button. It's really that simple. And a lot of people complain that they're doing this to appease the woke mob, which I don't really think is true at all. Here's the thing, Crusader Kings 3 is a game where weird stuff happens, like real zany stuff can go on in this game. I'm not surprised that in a historical sandbox game, an option like homosexual marriage is offered. And that's the thing too, right? At the end of the day, Paradox games are historical sandboxes. Yes, you can play the game as a normal, historically accurate medieval simulator. Later. But if you want to veer from the course of history, that can be done, and Paradox gives you the tools to do so. That is the appeal to these sorts of games. It's not about diversity, it's about adding flavor to the game. This is something that Paradox games have literally always been about. The ability for the player to let history play out as they want it. It's funny, these people talk about the game as if no one wants to change when, in fact, I'd put good money on it that most of the Crusader Kings 3 community endorses this change. Anything, you know, give the game a little more spice. Hell, look at the forums where the feedback is mostly positive. I think the real kicker here is, these are the same sort of mannerisms we've come to expect from SJWs. We've seen it before where social justice warriors see something that they don't like in media, they get pissy over it. Even if they don't consume that very media. And I'd say literally the exact same thing is happening here. These are very clearly people who've never played or even had interest in playing a Paradox game. Otherwise, they'd understand that this is par for the course. And what's funny to me is, these anti-SJW types are the same sort of people who defend gatekeeping for that very reason. They want to protect their media from those who would demand to see it changed, even if they themselves don't participate in it. That's the kicker right there, man. This is a change that most of the Paradox community would support, and here you have these absolute geniuses getting angry over it, even though they've probably never played a single Paradox game in their life. Two sides of the same ring a dingin coin. And that's why this isn't like a big controversy, that's why this isn't being blown out of proportion, because this is ultimately something that the community wants. This is a change that they support, so there's no reason for outrage. But you know, I guess it's for the best. I don't want these people who refuse to understand the spirit of Paradox games in my community. They don't want to play the game because a totally optional game mechanic makes them mad? Well, in the words of a certain tabletop gaming company, you will not be missed. Well, that's all I've got for this shtick, baby. So, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.